let's all think back to our first lesson about ancient agriculture. Do you remember some of the ways that people used to grow and harvest crops thousands of years ago? In this lesson, we will learn about how we process food today. There's a lot to learn about how our society today grows and distributes food. We will compare and contrast modern day agriculture methods to ancient methods. We will understand how modern food processing has an effect on food costs, the environment, and the health of our population. We will learn how supporting local farmers has a positive impact on the local economy and environment. In this lesson, we have some very important vocabulary words to learn. Understanding them will help you to make good choices about what you eat so that you can grow and be healthy. Pause the lesson and write the words in your garden journal or say them out loud with me. Our first word is nutrition. Nutrition is the study of food and how vitamins, minerals, proteins, and fat work inside your body. Our next word is food processing. This is the way we change raw ingredients into ready-to-eat food products. Our next word is preservative. A preservative is a substance added to food, it's usually a chemical, that keeps it from spoiling. Lots of times, preservatives are used in unhealthy foods that aren't very good for our bodies. Our last word is local. A place like a neighborhood or farm situated nearby to where you live. It's a great idea to buy food locally. Today, we are going to focus on oranges. Do you think an orange can cost a million dollars? Let's see how an orange travels from a farmer to the freezer at a grocery store and see what happens in between. Oranges often have a long way to go to become orange juice. First, they are loaded onto a truck and are driven miles and miles to a processing plant. It takes a lot of fuel to transport produce. Do you think that affects the environment? Food processing is how food from the grocery store is made in a factory. In this example, millions of oranges will be automatically juiced and then bottled on an assembly line. Processed foods take a lot more labor, materials, and energy to make, so they are usually more expensive than natural unprocessed food. Sometimes chemicals are added as preservatives to help the food last longer on the shelf. Processed food sometimes has ingredients that most people don't even know what they are. Now, the juice goes back on a refrigerated truck and takes another long trip to the grocery store. Wow, that's a lot of pollution causing gas. Can you think of another way to get your orange juice? What if you just bought oranges locally and juice them yourself? Now over to your garden teacher to see what's happening in the garden. Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Mary, your garden teacher, and I am here today for our lesson at the Arroyo Grande Farmer's Market. And we're gonna check out what it is to shop locally and see what we can find here. The people who used to grow their own foods, as you learned in our ancient agriculture video, they didn't have the convenience of shopping like this. So we're gonna see what it is to buy locally, which is gonna be close to your home, anywhere from 15 to maybe 30, 40 miles away. All right, so let's go check out the farmer's market. I'm out in public, so I have to put my mask on first. So here it goes. All right, let's go. Okay, so we went looking for the million dollar orange. And we're not gonna find the million dollar orange here because this is all produce that is sold locally. It is grown locally and sold locally. And I would like you to meet, and your name Amber please? Smith. Amber Smith. And Amber is the owner of, yep. what is the name of your We're farm? L and C. Smith Groves out of Exeter, California. Yes, so they're in the Central Valley. And that is a really, really hot place. And what do they need there more than anything else to grow this beautiful produce? Water, of course. And so that again goes back to our lesson about how we move water for irrigation. So let's take a look at some of this other produce that we have. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of citrus. We have oranges, limes. Here's some honey. This is a mandarin quat. Ooh. So that's a hybrid. Uh, a mandarin quad. I've never even heard of that, but that is really amazing. Yeah, satsumas, or blanco, blood oranges. They're really light in color because of the summer fruit. Usually in the winter, they're a little darker. Wonderful. Oh, and look, 
Orange juice is fresh squeezed. Okay, remember in our lesson, we talked about food processing and how these oranges, well, this is actually a mandarin, but this little mandarin has to travel miles and miles and miles, maybe all the way from Florida, just to end up back in California. So this is orange juice in a little quart size. And this is all grown locally and squeezed locally and brought to this wonderful farmer's market. It takes about 30 oranges this size to fill one of these. Wow. So if you do the math on that, 30 oranges to this quart, how many oranges would you have to have to do one, two, three, four, five, six quarts? So thank 150 you. oranges? That's a lot of oranges. And imagine how far those oranges would have to travel. What would that happen to the environment if we keep getting all of our produce from different places around the United States? If you have to bring all those oranges from Florida to California, it's going to burn a lot of fuel and it's going to create pollution. But if you just do it locally like this, it's a much, much better way to go for our environment. And it's really super tasty and fresh. So we're at our next stand at the Arroyo Grande uh, Farmer's Market. And we are at the Chavez Family Farms booth. And they are located in Santa Maria. Now Santa Maria is only 15 miles from here. And we are going to meet Arturo. And Arturo is helping us with our produce today. And so I have a couple questions. Yes. Now, you are selling, growing and selling locally. Yes. Uh, do you find that this is economically better for you to be able to come here to somewhere so close to your farm? Oh, no, we really like it. We go as far as Santa Barbara, but we really like our local markets. Oh, know? that's great. Yeah, especially the one in San, San Luis Obispo, oh, which yes. we were at this morning. Yeah, everybody's looking forward to the San Luis Obispo market coming back. So let's take a look at some of Arturo's um, produce. We have wonderful peppers and beans. You know, we're growing those at uh, our little garden and all kinds of root crops. Ooh, I see something that I'd really like to get. I would like to get, um, let me take, let me take two poblano peppers, please. Go ahead and choose the ones you oh, like. Oh, all right. Let's see. You want red ones or green ones? Maybe maybe one with a little bit of red tinge. Yeah, a little red means a little sweeter. A little sweeter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, we'll get three of them and do something fun. Okay, so here are the poblanos that I'm getting. This is a beautiful bag of spinach. Yeah, Let's it's all washed. It's all washed, ready to go. See how convenient, and it's really fun because you get to meet the people that you're actually buying from. So I'm going to add a bag of spinach to that. Okay, Arturo, ring us up. Yeah, add a twenty, five dollars. <throat> add your fifteen. All right. Take another pepper with you, whichever one you want. Oh, really? Go for it. Oh, cool. Should we get a green one? Let's compare. We'll do a, a flavor comparison. So we're going to get a green pepper to go with our slightly red peppers. I'll just put that in there. All right. I thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Well, I've had a great time here at the um, Arroyo Grande Farmer's Market. And, oh, thank you. Um, I don't know if you can hear the chickens in the background, but that's what yeah. Arroyo Grande is also famous for. So these are some of the famous Arroyo Grande chickens. <laughs> I had to share these. Oh, they seem to be going in order. Is the big white one going to go? Maybe we could get one more crow. Bye chickens! So I hope you enjoyed our little tour here today and I hope it gave you a really good idea of how local growing and selling helps the environment and also helps the economy of the local farmer.
Okay, you guys, I'll see you later. Bye. You may have already worked through some of these questions with your garden teacher, but take some time to write down your responses in your garden journals to the questions that you have not already covered. Thank you for joining us today. For some interesting reading about food processing, check out the book An Orange in January by Diana Hutz Aston. See you all next time.